Hi, I welcome you all once again to my next lecture. I am Dr. Hari Haran, Professor of Biotechnology. So today's lecture we are going to discuss about the cosmic vector. So in this lecture I have divided into three major segments. So the first one is we will get a brief introduction about what is vector and what is all about. Second part we will discuss about the cosmic vector elaborately and in the third part we will discuss about the PJB8, we are one of the cosmic vector. So let us discuss one by one. First we will start with a basic introduction about a vector. So everybody knows, uh, first we will define, we will tell what is a vector. So a vector is nothing but a carrier DNA molecule which helps in the delivering of a, a foreign DNA into a host cell. That means vector is simple. A foreign DNA is integrated into a carrier molecule forming a RDNA, then this carrier molecule helps to get inside into the host cell. This is all about a vector. Uh, second point is we can classify vector. We can classify vector into different types. So depending on the source, so we can classify the vector into four major types. One is the plasmid vector, which is an extra chromosomal DNA of a bacteria. Second is the bacteriophage vector or we can call as a viral vector. And third is the cosmid vector. That is, we are going to discuss elaborately on this aspects today. And the final one is the artificial chromosomes. So, if you take any vector, the vector should carry the basic certain features. So, as you can see, all the engineered vectors currently available are having these three basic characteristics. That is one, it contains a replication site and origin of replication so it can reproduce itself. Second, it carries a restriction site where we can cut the vector and we can insert the foreign DNA of our insert. So since we can clone different types of uh, foreign DNA with different restriction sites, it is also called as multiple cloning sites. If it is not available, we can engineer and we can add a polylinkers to it. And third one is a marker so that we can identify the uh, cloned one from the wild strain. These are the three basic characteristics a vector should carry. That is one, this uh, replication site. So the vector should multiply on itself. Second, it carries a restriction site. And third, it should carry a marker. So let's we study elaborately about a cosmid. So before undergoing what is a cosmid, first we understand what is mean by a face mid. So actually there are uh, certain drawbacks in both the vectors what we have studied previously that is the plasmid and a phase vector. The advantage of the plasmid vector is that you can see it carries a marker and it carries the multiple cloning site and it also carries the origin of replication. But the problem with the plasmid vector is that inserting into the host cell it's become a difficult part. So this is the limitation what the plasmid vector was having. In contrast, if we say the bacteria phage vector, it carries the one replication. So, but it has a, another big advantage when compared to plasmid vector is that it can be easily inserted into a host organism because virus itself has an ability to infect a host organism. So, insertion into the host organism is very easy. But the major drawback with the pro problem with the phage vector is that we cannot clone a large fragment of DNA. So there was a idea about to take up the characteristics of these two one that is the plasmid and the phage and combine it to form a another engineered vector so that will be helpful for us. So the combination of these elements that is both the plasmid and the phage are uh, uh, combining both the things were collectively called as a phase made. So the phase mates generally started widely started used in various RDNA technology and especially in the cDNA cloning. The most widely used phase mate is the lambda jab series of vectors. So this was the basic idea where the cosmids started coming upon and widely started using it. So what was all about a cosmid? What is a cosmid? If you see is that cosmid or basically it is a plasmid but that are 
easily packed into a bacteria phage especially the lambda phage particle and it can be delivered into the host cell so what it what it actually should carry is that it should have an ability to pack this plasmid into a bacteria phage and it can be easily delivered inside a host cell that was the major objective where the cosmid has been designed so if you see that what we are taking we are taking all the characteristics of the plasmid we are integrating into the lambda phage especially at the cost site so the cost site is very important because this is a very small region of this uh, lambda phage where it can easily recognized and packed by the viral particle system that is lambda phage particle so we are integrating this uh, foreign dna between this cos side and we are able to generate a cosmate that is cosmate is basically a type of a phase mate it carries both the characteristics of the plasmid and a lambda phage so this is uh, actually the about the cosmate so we will get uh, in the understanding what are the various features the cosmate is having if you see the various features the first one the cosmate have is a selectable marker which is prime importance which was very difficult process in a lambda phage vector that has to be solved by this cosmate that is it carries a selectable marker so we have two person one is the plasmid another is the lambda phage in the cosmate so this selectable marker is obtained from a plasmid and second is the multiple cloning sites so the lambda phage vector the major drawback it has a very limited cloning site it has very limited restriction site whereas the plasmid has a different types of restriction site so this multiple cloning sites so for the cosmid is delivered by the added plasmid part of the vector and the third one which is called a cos site is uh, derived from the phage vector so this cos site helps in the delivery of the vector and the replication of the vector these three major features has contributed a greater development of the cosmid so the, when compared to the plasmid and the phage vector the cosmid the major benefit is that we can enclose a large amount of dna into this vector so based on these features uh, let us understand the concept how the gene cloning uh, can be done with the help of the casmid so i have given a pictorial representation of the gene cloning scheme how generally carried out using a cosmid vector so in this thing what we have to do is first we have to take a cosmid vector so you can see from the figure the cosmid vector carries three sites one is the marker site in this example i have put it about the ampicillin resistant that is apr and second one it carries a restriction endonuclein target site that is the multiple cloning site this both are derived from the plasmid part of the vector and the cos site as you can see it is derived from the phage part of the vector so first what we are doing is we are restricting this to open up the restriction part so we will get a uh, circular form of the cosmid into a linear form uh, carrying at the cut at the restriction site as you can see from the figure similarly what we will do is we will cut the genomic dna and we will get a fragment of the dna which has been represented in the dotted line as you can see from the figure and both the thing has been joined together with the help of a dna ligase so one this joined together with the help of a dna ligase as you can see that so we have taken both the part one it is joined we have getting the end on the two sides of the uh, cosmic vector between two cosmic vectors one foreign dna has been entrapped more properly we can enclose a dna size of about 37 to 52 clio base pair which is higher than the lambda phage vector and the plasmid vector as you can see once we joined it then this cos site will easily help the viral particle to get entrapped into the phage that is entrapped into the caspid and forms a viral particle this viral particle is very easily gets infected into the host cell 
so once it gets internalized into the host cell as you can see it once again forms a circularized plasmid like thing then it started reproducing on its own and producing a large quantities of the uh, uh, cloned DNA and moreover as you already know the isolation process of the plasmid is very easily so similarly the isolation of the cosmid is also similar to the plasmid from the bacterial cell and it can be isolated and purified very easily this is the basic schematic of the gene cloning of the cosmic vector so once again I will uh, remember I still, but with the help of your process how it is happening is that the cosmates are nothing but it's a recombinant one carrying the foreign DNA easily packed into a phage coating particle that is the uh, uh, what we call the, the viral cover then in this that it can carry a large amount of DNA generally of our desired size the most probable size range is about uh, 30 to 47 kilo base pairs of molecules can be easily accommodate into a lambda phage vector after packing it can be easily infected into a suitable host so once it has been infected into a suitable host like the plasmid it gets recircularized then it is normally develops like a plasmid in a large quantity and propagate into the next generation and we can easily get even expression vector or we can get a large quantity of the thing and we can identify this clone with the help of the drug resistant marker as in the case we have studied the, the ampicillin marker of the cosmic and easily identify the clone these are the basic characteristics and the process how we can perform we are cloning of a cosmic and how what are the various benefits the cosmic is having so once we talk about the advantages of this cosmic as it carries the both the advantages of the plasmid and the phage vector the first one is the major advantage it can carry the cloning of a large piece of the foreign DNA that means up to 52 kilo best pair we can comfortably accommodate into a cosmic vector so based because of this uh, large quantity of this DNA that the cosmic can accommodate it is generally used for the construction of the eukaryotic genome so genomic genomic library of the eukaryotic generally started started developing with the help of the cosmic vector so this is my the second part so we have uh, basically understand about about what is a cosmid and cosmid is nothing but is a combination of a plasmid and a phage vector and it carries both the benefits of the things and how the process is happening let us uh, explain this with an example let us consider a cosmid vector that is pjb8 so as you can see from the figure the pjb8 uh, is about a size of 5.4 kilo base pair having uh, two regions which has been marked you can see the cos region on the right hand side uh, and it carries an amphicillin resistant region which is generally used as a marker in the left hand side so apart from this it carries the unique restriction sites like eco uh, sorry bam h1 HIND3, PST1 and SAL1. These are the common restriction sites which has been used for the restriction of the genomic DNA also. Let us understand how the cosmic PJB8 can be easily cloned into your uh, can be easily cloned and identified. Uh, just I have illustrated with a diagram as you can see from the figure the cosmic PJB8 cloning scheme. So what we are going to do is first we take the vector that is the PJP8. So as I've already showed that it carries, I have represented here only three restriction enzymes that is BAM H1, HIND3 and SAL1. So these three enzymes why I have put it is, is very easy for your understanding how the cloning can be done. So what we are going to do is first we are going to restrict it with the help of the HIND3 as you can see from the figure. Once I use a HIND3 followed by a phosphatase I can got a break near to the upwards of the cos side and I can get a linear DNA molecule. So similarly if I restrict with a 
sal 1 on the right hand side you can see that we can get an another one which is below the restriction of the cross site so what we are doing is we are taking the uh, PJB8 and separately we are treating with the uh, hint 3 restriction enzyme only alone so that I get get a linear restriction side as you can see in the left hand side of the uh, picture and similarly we are taking an another one carrying the PJP8 and treated with sal1 restriction enzyme so both the things get separately after that what we are going to do is we want to insert our foreign DNA for that what we are doing is we are going to remove the part which is uh, we are going to insert into the part where uh, near to the ampicillin resistant as you can see in BAM H1 so it has been treated with BAM H1 so the BAM H1 part has been removed the part which is not needed in between the BAM H1 and the HIND3 and similarly SAL1 and the HIND3 has been removed so as you can see both the parts has been removed then the same time what we are going to is we are digesting the uh, genomic DNA with an uh, partial digestion is done with the help of the restriction engine that is saw 3a and this causes we get a restricted fragment of our interest of around 32 to 47 glow base pair then it is mixed and it is joined so by this ligation we can see the cause sites on both the side of the fragment of the foreign DNA as in the picture so both the cause side will get recircularized whenever it wants because the cause the important uh, function of the cause site is once it gets entered into the cytoplasm of the host cell it can get circularized as we have studied in while in the phage vector so it has a foreign DNA which can be easily expressed or it can be easily transcribed and which can be easily multiplied in large numbers so this is once we got it we will pack it into the viral particle and it is infected into the host cell so after the host cell it started replication and we will get a maximum quantity of the cloned DNA how we can identify this cloned DNA is that the PJB8 carries the marker that is the what I call is the ampicillin resistant if we cultivate this uh, in an ampicillin resistant minimal media the vector that is the cosmid which is inserted into the host cell can only survive whereas the, which it doesn't got infected doesn't survive and it eventually dies so we can easily isolate the cloned one and it can be propagated and we can get a high yield of this uh, uh, cloned DNA then we will study some basic features of the modern cosmetics has been developed there are fewer modern cosmetics has been developed so the modern cosmetics developed with certain additional features it carrying a multiple cloning site which can be easily cloned where the non-sized dna can be accommodated and apart from that the phase promoters has been included into the cloning site and finally uh, certain uh, drag uh, uh, cutting engines of restriction endonuclease like NOT1, SAC2 and syphil sites has also been included. So this has been provided a dramatic uh, modernization of this cosmid. A few examples of the modern cosmid are PWE and SCOS series. This has been widely used as a modern cosmic vector. So I will thank you very much for your patiently listening about this cosmic vector. So this cosmic vector will have a very insight. The development of these vectors starting from a plasmid to a bacteriophage to a cosmid has profound a particular importance. In my next lecture we will discuss about the artificial chromosomes. So I will thank you very much.